And after a nice welcome like that, a, a nice um, introduction, I want to say welcome to Scholar Thread Ministries Afternoon News, the news before the news. But anyways, <laughs> that's not what we're doing here. It's um, um, Scholar Thread Ministries, it's a ministry page, right? And we have some good news, right? We have some good news for you. But um, we just like to wish each, wish, wish each and every one of you all a, a warm welcome this afternoon to come and join with us for our program, Times of Refreshing, right here on our Scholar Thread Ministries Facebook page, right? So welcome to each and every one of you. I'm seeing a lot of traffic <coughs> outside. I know there was an accident on the southbound lane somewhere in the vicinity of Monroe Road. So... That has caused a lot of backup and, and gridlock all over. So just be careful on your roads out there. And if you have data on your phone and you're listening to us, well, welcome. And we are here to keep you company in the traffic, right? So um, this afternoon, I'll be reading from Exodus 20, and it will be verse 12. It's one of the commandments, one out of the Ten Commandments. It says, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the lord hath given thee so it says honor thy father and thy mother that your days may be long upon the land which the lord thy god giveth thee right and when we look at the definition of honor from the merriam webster's dictionary it tells us a good name or public esteem so i want to say this afternoon to all you children out there you might be young children you might be adults you might be married you might be a little older children right but you still have parents around i want to say honor your mothers and your fathers there so that your days will be long give them a good name now right give them some high esteem in public too you know and i want to say this that a lot of families are under attacks where you see um, mothers against daughters, sons against fathers. And I want to say this, that, you know, something is only a short time in your lifetime. Maybe you're going to have your parents around. And your parents <laughs> are there to guide you along the way, right? Um, for those of us who have children, you know, we would say, of course, like my sister and I, we laugh. When we have to discipline um, our two children, Jesslyn and Alex, because we could just hear our mother say the same thing, <laughs> you know. And my mother used to say, "Tell me, Sarah, you're gonna be one wicked mother, you know." And sometimes when I have to discipline Jesslyn, I so I could just hear her saying that, you know, "Sarah, you're gonna be one wicked mother." <clears throat> and um, she would say stuff like, "The things all you're doing, me all you're trying to do, all your back." You know, and you know, we could just hear her saying things that we have to discipline these children. So we understand now what this woman was going through, right? But I want to say that when they're guiding us along the way, sometimes we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear their wisdom because we feel like we know a little too much, a little more than them. Even at a young age, too, Justin and Alex feels like they know what time is and they feel like they know too much, right? So I want to say your parents know exactly, um, you know, sometimes the wisdom. They stop and take in the wisdom because they are older than us. They have crossed those bridges, walked those roads. <laughs> Great dads get promoted to grandpa. Grand grandparents too know what is good well, what is good to grandparents. Grandparents, yeah. even your grandparents too. Your parents mightn't be around, but your grandparents probably brought you up. You understand? Listen to them too, you know. So yeah, we have a kick out of it when we have to discipline Jesslyn and Alex because we were like, we used to do our mother the same thing, right? So it's just so funny, you know. But I know if shows was around, uh, my mother, she would have spoiled them and she would have been laughing at us today and say, see. You see what I tell all you? <laughs> and I live to see it. But anyways, her words, you know, ring into our ears. And um, listen to your parents. Honor your mother and your father today. And honor means give them a good name now. Give your parents a good name and public esteem. You know, don't be 
talking bad about them in public. I keep your opinion, say yourself sometimes, you know. So um, we'll just open with a word of friend and we'll start. Heavenly Father, we just bless you in this afternoon, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your scripture. We thank you for your reminder to honor our um, fathers and our mothers, oh God, Lord. Um, that our days will be long, oh God, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray, oh God, for homes this afternoon, for mothers and fathers and children and their relationships. I pray, oh God, that you mend families oh god i pray for my neighbors i pray for my own family i pray for my extended family i pray for my um my friends families oh god i pray oh god at all families that are under attack this afternoon oh god that you meet them at their point of need and make amends this afternoon oh god um born relationships oh god heavenly father um ignite relationships again between mothers and daughters fathers and sons oh god lord for um you know, a house divided against itself cannot stand the God, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you this afternoon that you have families, the care and concerns of families at your heart this afternoon, O oh God. And we thank you for blessing families this afternoon, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, you said it, sure, and I was at Charan today. Um, is that true? I, I, today? I, I, mm -hmm. I went to the salon. And Alex had online classes, um, summer class, you see. Yeah, yeah. So Jocelyn enrolled in it too. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, Papa, you pull a chance to sit down next to me now. Pull a mm -hmm. chance to sit down next to me now, boy, and think here, and do some classes too. I say, okay. So I said, <laughs> I sit down next to him now, the teacher, talking, but I, I tried to stay out of the picture now. I say, out of the picture. So I'm next to him now, so the, the teacher, I don't know. The, the, and the teacher probably know everything about the children, about their background, or probably how to talk and she question them and things there. Probably. Because when mm -hmm. Alex was sitting on, when I was sitting on next to Alex, um, she said, Alex, how are you smiling and laughing and, and, and your face go, 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 um I'm looking to so your grandfather next to you and your papa next to you. You say, <laughs> <laughs> you say uh -huh. yes. You say, you say yes, my papa next time I hear. So uh -huh. he, um they tell them to draw a scenery and think about a beach. So we draw a little beach. Uh, and you know, looking at mm -hmm. six years old, and, and, and you have to look at children and observe them as they're talking about parents. Parents must observe the children too. You shouldn't prov uh, provoke them to rap. And you must also um, try to listen and look at them. Even if they are, might be six years old. Because I look at Alex and I can determine that Alex, well, Jesslyn have it too, but I've never seen her at, um, in a classroom setting. But the 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 the, the um, uh, exercise that Alex and them got was to draw uh, a photograph of a day on the beach. So what he did now, he drew a photograph of of uh, of the day on the beach. He, he he drew four people, two on one side and two on a, on the other side and a, and a net in the middle. So when he draw that now, and um, the teacher asked him, ask him to ask, oh, where's that? He say that is you and me, Papa. We are on one team. And then Auntie Sarah and Jocelyn and another team. And we are on the beach. And there's a net. We're playing the tr the ball over the net. And we have a thing going on. He put a little, um, he put the sun, the clouds, and draw the beach and thing. And, and he, um, he said, we are on the beach. So the teacher asked him, so why? Um, so what, so he ain't carrying your mother and father on the beach? So it's, it's that kind of imaginary um, thing. And um, he, he said, no, they have to work. So and, and asked him, and what your mother do now? She said, she working. So he said his mother and father have to work. Now, I'm not saying anything um, about Shelly and, and Marlon concerning Alex, but it reminded me that sometimes we as parents and grandparents have to take time off or time away from work and invest in some family time and do things. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. you know, right. I didn't say it to the teacher who said it. And he, he, he I'm thinking so. As I rightly say, and then father and mother, but the parents should also pay attention to the needs of the children and try to build memories and family life. Like how I used to take the three of you all over the place in the Jeep, all in the bush, all over the place, have all you using people latrine. Um, your grandmother used to curl with me and say, Boy, you can't, Glenn is girl train, you have any, any kind of people who are latrine? I say, Well, what better place for them to learn about it? <laughs> At least they had to dig a hole and go in the bush and use okay. bush and things. But mm -hmm. it, the thing is, you all, I know you all had great memories because I, I of hate, course. Uh, I'm always speak about it all in the, you know, driving with the, before we drive all over the place, before people re, um, 
for four-wheel drive already became popular in Trinidad. People used to look at them as old Jeep. Now everybody driving up and on, on looking for a Jeep and, and like my own to drive up. And the man, I want to pay my um, money to ride my Jeep. I said, no, 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 I'm not renting out my Jeep. Me and anybody, I drive my Jeep. So then my personal mm -hmm. ride. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they might look at things um, and take it for granted um, fam in family life and things like that. But as later on, you would recognize the importance of spending time with family, um, yeah. with your parents, with your children, and, um, and people like that. But the, and that's not what I want to talk about today. Today, I want to talk about <clears throat> sin. <clears throat> But I ain't talking about sin. You know, people talk about sin is fire and brimstone as we're preaching. Yeah. Every time I talk about sin, you know, say, so, oh, sin. But what is really sin? A lot of people um, talk about sin. You hear a lot of preachers preach on sin. You hear people. Uh, no, sin is not the topic. The topic is uh -huh. um, what is the point? What is the point? Okay. Yeah. So, um, but, but it's really sin. Is, 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 I'll, I'll show you why the, the topic is what is the point. But, um, what is the point is a question yeah mm -hmm. so so what happened now is that um israeli sin are talking about and how we yeah. approach sin and how the world approach sin how the church the modern day church approach sin and what is really sin because sometimes you might look at two people living together <coughs> a couple might be living together young, young couple probably can't afford to get married whatever happened they're living together for like 20 years and and they and just saying yeah, my and things they woke up, but they're living together, they cohabiting. And and, and they're together for 20 years, bam, their children, and you know, they're, they're, they're and they're having a big wedding. Is that sin? You see, the church referred to people like that as living in sin and are starting off in, in a in an area where they don't want to start off, but I feel the Lord are leading me there. Is that sin? Is that sin when a couple have a, a cohabiting? That the, the word. Marriage in the in the Old Testament, the first word that, that is translated marriage is cohabit. So when this one married that one, they cohabit. And that's the, the, the first word for marriage is to cohabit. So once two people cohabit and you're living together, you're married. A lot of people have lived together and figure, well, I ain't going to get married because I could always get out of this. No, you, you, you cohabit, you're married. So anytime you get out of that, of, of, you can co cohabit with 10 and 20 people. You cohabit with one person. Anytime you keep moving around in that adultery partner. Whether you, you yeah. put a ring on the person's finger or, or you get married in church. Getting married in church is a tradition. Even the Hebrews do and they need to get married in the temple. I get married in church and bless any marriage and thing. Yes, you bless the marriage, but getting married in church is a is a is a, is a tradition. Right? Yeah. When mm -hmm. a man and a woman consummate a marriage is when they have sex together for the first time, you consume any marriage, you're married. A lot of people walking around married and they know they're married. You know why? Because mm -hmm. they sleep together, they have sex together, and they have sex, well, obviously together, they have sex. I'm saying sex, because it's big people we're talking about here, we, I, I mentioned no words today. They, yeah. they have sex, and they feel it, and they're moving around. But partner, here we're going, from the time you, you, you cohabit with a woman and you have sex, you're married to the woman. Right? So don't go, yeah. don't, don't go around, um, I feel when you're married to she, and I'm going to, you know, you are married, and you better look at yourself as married. In the eyes of yeah. God, you're married. You don't have to go in church for God to see as married. From the time you sleep with the woman and you cohabit with the woman, you're married. You can't get out of that. If you leave, if, if you leave that person and go with another person, you commit an adultery. You, you understand? So a lot of yeah. people commit an adultery and they're and, 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 and the pacifying. Yeah, they don't and know. Mm -hmm. Well, I ain't get married in the church. Uh -huh. You don't have to go to church to get married, partner. Once you sleep with that woman and, 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 and the both of you cohabit, you're married. So don't feel like getting yeah. out of that stuff. So don't play want to go and live with anybody and cohabit and, and figure you'll get out of that. And um, oh yeah, now nah, we are married, so I could move with other person, go to go punish me. Eh? Go look at that as adultery. Yeah. Right? Commitment. So you're around. coming on to commitment, yeah. You committed to that one person. Yeah. You are married. Yeah. yeah. You understand? It's, it's only tradition, and the Bible says tradition makes the power of God of no effect. Oh, oh, what happened? Other people say, oh, well, I'm going to church. So people using that to pacify their, 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 themselves and hide the sin. But once you cohabit with a woman, you sleep with the woman, you make sure you're married to the woman. And going in church and, um, and registering is a formality. Even the government re recognize that if a man and a woman cohabit for more than five years, they're legally married in the eyes of the government. And the woman is, is um, uh, and benefits from, um, uh, has the same and benefit as a wife. Oh, so when people come in now, and I blame any people alone, the church is responsible for that too. Because when these people come to church, they cohabit in, 
The church tell them they're married. And when they come to church now, and what happened, they make them feel like outcasts. They feel like, oh, they're married. And the whole church gossiping that Jane and John living together and they're married. But in the eyes of God, they're married. Yeah. And if they recognize that they are married, then they would live like a married couple, even if they ain't go in the, in the red house and register, or even if they ain't go in the church. You are married. Yeah. Remember, the topic is sin. The topic is sin. So you have to identify what sin is. Now, the mm -hmm. Bible says if a man divorce a woman, right? And, they talk, and Jesus himself I talk about divorce. And Paul, they talk about divorce. Leaving a husband, a man leave, and leaving a woman, a wife, his wife, or separating from his wife, or a wife being separated from her husband, that is not adultery, and that is not a sin. Nowhere in the Bible you see where a woman leave a man, right? And go somewhere else, right? And, and go. She leave the man, and that is not a sin. You separate from the man. Separation yeah. is not a sin, I, I, I'm thinking, right? Divorce is not even a sin. God will like divorce. He don't like separation, but if you divorce somebody, it's not a sin. The only way so it, it becomes a sin when, I'm, when somebody is married and separated is if a man married a woman. You never say the woman commits adultery. No. If a man married a woman who is divorced, he commits adultery. That, and that's what the Bible says. Now, the point yeah. I'm making is if a man and a woman separate, and you know why? I remember it had this, this, this a Nigerian woman, I can't remember her name off her now. She sang uh, some beautiful and gospel songs and she sang it in Nigeria, uh, in Nigerian and English. And that woman, husband, was abusive to her. He used to beat up the, the Nigerian woman and everything because the church, because she did, she wanted to continue praising and worshiping God and church, she stayed with the man until the man killed the woman. How many women today, because they feel separated from your husband is a sin, right? Even if it's to save your life, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Even if it's to save your life, um, mm -hmm. um, the feel is a sin and the church neglect these people and tell them, no, so your husband, and, and they end up dying. Right? Why is that? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not a sin for a woman to leave her husband. It's a sin if, if a man remarry her after she's divorced. That is the sin. But yeah. leaving her husband is not a sin. The church can't chastise people or, or, or make them feel bad because they leave their husband. If the husband is abusive and threatening to kill a woman, and what he wanted to do, stay there. If the husband is ill treating the woman or treating the children, what the church wants her to do, stay there. I don't have to report. I could, talk, I could talk how I want because I don't have to report to any... Um, any church board and I go lose my pastorship or anything, but a lot of people refuse to, 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 to recognize and acknowledge what sin is. So what we yeah. call sin, and the reason I say all that, what we call sin is really tradition. So yeah. tradition, the traditions of men have now become sin or have now become law, the law of God. Right? Tradition. So a lot of people now, <clears throat> a, a lot of people, right? A lot of people now, um, I mean, I mean your, your, your stream's sticking, but I nothing. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, but a lot of people now, what they do, they're using tradition and calling it sin. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so here it is now. Um, there's no separation between sin and, 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 um, and, 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 and innocence or, or, or guilt and innocence in the church. Once the church pronounces you guilty, you're guilty. But that is wrong. And that is not what sin is. And that's why I want to talk about what sin is today. Both in the Old and New Testament, the word used to, to describe sin. And that's why I say, well, what is the point? And I, I, it's yes, sin I'm talking about, but what is the point? And Genesis chapter 4 and verse 7 says, If thou doest well. And this is, is, is when Cain slew Abel. Eh? Cain and his okay. brother went to make a, 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 a sacrifice to God, right? <clears throat> God accept one. <clears throat> And he didn't accept the other one. So here it is, he is talking out to Cain. He's telling Cain now, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin light at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now, sin there comes from a Greek word, which means, not a Greek, a Hebrew word, which means a miss, a misstep, a slip of the foot, technically a stumble. So this is God talking to, to, to Cain, <coughs> telling him, boy, <coughs> a misstep or stum or a stumbling or waiting for you, you know. If you do do right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right? A misstep. So mm -hmm. sin in the Old Testament is a misstep or a stumble or a slip of the foot. Right? 
And that is really what sin is in the Old Testament. And let's look at what sin is in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 12 and 31. Jesus is speaking. This is God, this is God speaking to Cain, who calls sin a misstep. Eh? <clears throat> God calls sin a misstep or a slip of the foot. Mm -hmm. Jesus now, in Matthew 12 and 31, he is saying, Wherefore I say unto you, all man of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven of men. All man of sin. Sin there means failing to hit the mark or missing the point. Which is the topic I want to speak today. What is the point? If sin is missing the point in the New Testament, what really is the point? I, I mean, understand? Yeah. I, 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 and that is why I chose I, I, I use that today. Now, the Bible says, if sin in the Old Testament is a misstep or missing a step, right? In Psalms 37 and 23, the psalmist says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. I you know what God is saying there, what the psalmist is saying, the step, the footstep. So if sin is a misstep, the psalmist is saying the footstep or a step or a going, right, is ordered or set up or erect by the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And then delighted as favorable, and he is favorable in his journey. And that's what the psalmist is saying there, yeah. right? So here it is now, the church. And we as people, and I talk about people too, you know, whether you know God or you know God, people are not as responsible as well too, because I'm seeing a lot of that in the world. So what happened here now? This is what God says about sin. In the Old Testament, God calls sin a misstep or, or, mm -hmm. or, 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 um, or a miss or, 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 um, or a slip of the foot. In the New Testament, now the, and the Bible says, Jesus himself said, you failed to hit the mark or you missed the point. This is really what that word hamatia in the, in the Greek says. Missing the point or failing to hit the mark, right? The, and the same way uh, as, uh, as failing to hit the mark or missing the point is the same way as somebody who shoot an arrow and you miss the, the, and the point with the arrow, okay? Because the arrow was going to a point and you miss it. You shoot it and you miss it. So what really is sin? Yeah. sin, sin a lot of people don't know what sin is. Somebody do things. So we have to know what sin is. And how to treat sin in order for us to, uh, uh, you know, to forgive people who commit sin. Because some, we, and we could forgive people too, you know. Because God, God say, forgive those. And Jesus teach you to pray. Lord, um, help us to forgive those who trespass against us. As we trespass against, as you, um, um, forget, uh, forgive us our trespasses or our sins. As we forgive those who sin or trespass against us. Mm -hmm. Right? But we're not yeah. seeing that. We're not seeing that. A lot of people now, somebody trespass against you, they do, and they do you something, they make a misstep. They, uh, you know, they miss a point with you, or they make a mistake. So what we do, we, we refuse to forgive them. Christians and, and, and secular people are like, who don't know God? What, what they want to do, they, they hold the sin on the people, they, they hold the misstep, they hold the mistake, and they refuse to forgive that person. They want to see the person yeah. grind. They want to make the person suffer. I don't make them suffer. Uh, or I would forgive, but I wouldn't forget. All these kind of things. Yeah, yeah. A misstep or a mistake is, 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 is what mm -hmm. sin is. And, and you have the ability, we as people have the ability just like God to forgive those who, who make a misstep against us, who, who do things that we, we probably don't like. And you understand? But I'll show you how you overcome sin. Or what is the point? Because the question is, what is the point? If sin is missing the point, what is the point mm -hmm. that you're missing? I, I, and you know, I'm, I'm by sin. Yeah. And I'll show you how God, uh, if, if in the Old Testament, a misstep is a sin, then God ordered a man, orders a man's step, right? <clears throat> God orders a, the step of a good man. When a man moving, God is God organizing his step. He ain't go slip. He ain't go fall down, right? Is he who set it up and he who wrecked the man's footstep. Erect, not wreck, eh? erect, put up, right? <clears throat> now look at this. Psalm 27 and, 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 and 37 and 24. Here's what the psalm is saying. Do he fall? Do who fall? Fall that means to fail, to make a misstep, right? Though he mm -hmm. fall, right? He shall not be utterly cast down. Ut utterly cast down or cast down that means to fall on your face, to lie prostrate. It literally means to a uh, prostration. You know, if you prostrate before God, um, cast down means to prostrate. So though he fall or fail, he, 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 he shall not fall on his face. He shall not be down on his face. You know why? Because the next part of that verse says, For the Lord upholdeth him. With his hand, right? 
the Lord support him with his hand. The Lord hold up, hold up, support him with his hand. That the steps of a righteous man. Right? And that yeah. God ordered. But we are not righteous. However, we are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So our steps, right? Our, our, our steps are, are ordered of the Lord as well too. Now, we're yeah. talking about sin here. Now, and, and now here, here what, um, what, what, what Paul was talking about sin here. A lot of people don't understand this. Because I'm going in an area here because I've seen people who have done things um, behind my back or whatever it is. They told me what they do. I forgive them, but they are not forgiving themselves because of the mindset of the world. So they're grinding up. They turn up themselves because of what they do. But if somebody sin, right, and you forgive them, do, it is not written off. You don't have to hold it together, or grind up yourself, eat up yourself if somebody forgive you. And when God forgives people, you ain't going back to that sense. The devil wants to keep you in bondage. The devil wants to keep people bound. So what he do, he keep bringing back that sin or bringing back that misstep. Or, or, or bringing back that time or when you miss the point on you and you keep and, and people keep um bringing it back too and the people who bringing it back now they have more they made more mistakes in their life than the people they're trying to um accuse they made more yeah. mistakes they made more mistakes but they don't want to forgive but they want to forgive somebody yeah. if you <clears throat> sin is not something that cannot be forgiven jesus said the only sin that can be forgiven is blasphemy in the holy spirit so anybody who, who make a misstep Anybody who who um who who, who missed the point, you could you should be forgiven. If God forgiven these people, why can't we forgive them? And on the other hand, yeah. why can't they forgive themselves, knowing that we forgive them? And that is the problem. I had this a message since last week, but uh, you know, and this discussion, but and you know, I, I'm seeing things presently where people refuse to forgive other people, and and and, and people refuse to accept forgiveness because they feel you know the, the way the world going on i can't be forgiven for something and that i do so what they do the devil attack them grind up their mind and you know uh, and cause them to be stressed out and always be thinking about it to overthink but people forgive you man the person do, if you ask to forgive the person will say they forgive you but if they act by the action you will know they forgive you Right by your action, by God's action, by by somebody's actions, who you offend by the actions alone, you will know they forgive you. But you see, the way the world is so deceptive, and people and don't believe that <clears throat> they are honest people in the world, and people mm -hmm. who do, who um, and people who who believe the word of God and and live by the word of God, they don't believe that people do that today. But there are many people out there who live by the word of God. There yeah. are many people out there who do things contrary to what the world says. So if somebody offend you and they forgive you, accept the forgiveness, right? And if and if somebody asks you for forgiveness, forgive them and release them because the torment that that person might be going through thinking, well, you know, I do this. You are forgiven. Forgive yourself. Forget it and move on. But do, but, but don't stick, think that person will hold you in mind. It's not everybody would hold you in mind. Only people who are led by the devil would hold you in mind. Only people who are controlled by demonic spirits and influence would hold you in mind and try to dominate you. But there are people who have been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, who have been sanctified by, by, by his, his resurrection, and people who have been baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. There are many people like that in the world today, and those people who live according to the word of God, they forgive. And, 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 and mm -hmm. once they forgive, they, you, you are forgiven. But a lot of people feel that God has yeah. to forgive them. But there are some sins that people commit that the person to whom they offend or, or, or the people who, 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 who they offend if they for, they have to forgive you if they forgive you your sins are forgiven mm -hmm. you understand the point I'm, I'm trying to make here so we take sin yeah. now and, and we turn sin around but that's not what sin is and look at what paul was saying to the romans now the romans you know they have roman soldiers romans always at war rome, rome are fighting everybody so when you're speaking to romans they use war like terms right battle terms the romans go understand because everything is war in rome in them days war Everything they and they fight, you know, they're trying to conquer this country, that country. So then they're fighting among their own self. No, here it was. I listen to what Paul is saying to the Romans in chapter 6 and verse 3. Paul is saying, For the wages of sin is death, 
But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Mm -hmm. People say the wages of sin is death. So when you sin, your payment is death. Right? How many yeah. times we have heard that preach? How many times? But I want to show you how to read it based on the, 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 the exact words that Paul used and the context in which Paul was speaking here. So that people who feel when they sin, if they make a mistake, if they miss the point, right? If they miss the point, they're dead because they will die. What happens? There's death, there's separation from God. But watch what Paul was saying. I'll talk about that another time. But today I want to show people that, yes, you, if you sin, there is forgiveness. If you make a mistake and somebody forgive you, accept the, uh, the, the fact that that person forgave you, they forget about it. You forgive yourself now. Don't hold it down. Don't grind, and grind up yourself. Don't worry about it. That's what the devil wants you to do. But when you yeah. receive forgiveness by faith, you, you have to believe that that person really forgive you and forget about it. Don't try to yeah. pacify the situation or pacify the, the, and the person or feel you owe them something. If somebody forgive you, it means you don't owe them anything. When God forgive you, you don't owe God anything. Right? So this is what Paul was saying to the Romans here. For the wages of sin is that. You know what wages there is? Wages is a soldier's pay. He was speaking to the Romans and the Romans who knew soldiers. For the wages of sin is death. Right? This a soldier's pay. The salary a soldier receives. Yeah. Right? For sin is death. Right? And, and we all know what sin is. The, the salary a soldier received for missing the mark or missing the point is debt. Physical debt. Yeah. I want to understand what Paul is really referring to here. He was saying that if a soldier miss his, 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 his marker, he missed no the, the, the target. He, no error. He missed, yeah. I was yeah. dead. That's what, and that's what Paul yeah. was saying here. He wasn't saying that if somebody yeah. sinned, they would die. Now, sin separates us from God. Mm -hmm. We are already separated from God through Adam. And when we are born again, we are joined together with God's Spirit, right? But Paul was saying that if a soldier miss his mark, if a soldier miss mm -hmm. the mark, it means death. Because if you fire at another soldier, See, target, yeah. you, attack, you miss, that man will kill you. You understand the point and that Paul was trying to make here? He gave him right? a chance, yeah. The soldier gave the other, the opponent a chance to kill him, yeah. If the soldier mess, he dead. How many? If, uh, and, 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 and a lot of times the Roman soldiers are fighting close up, right? So you 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 mess the mark. You 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 in a sword fight and your and your pace. How many times you see sword fighting? And a man fighting with swords and thing. And a man and up close and you I make a choke to to, um, um, to kill him and you miss and he kill you. How many times you see that? Because yeah. they, and they close up. Mm -hmm. So so the wages they are soldiers pay. A soldier's pay is not actually money. What the, 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 the pay a soldier receives for missing the mark is dead. Because if you have missed the mark, you're dead. The next man will kill you. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul was saying here. So you have to understand mm -hmm. what Paul was speaking to Romans. He was using warlike terms. And he said, but the gift of God, the grace, that is the gift, the grace of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So uh, uh, if, a, if, if a soldier miss, he died. When you sin as a child of God or, 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 or somebody, if you miss the mark, God will forgive you once you repent and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. So the gift, the grace that God gives you for missing the mark is eternal life through Christ Jesus. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, even you and myself. So you have to understand yes. what Paul was saying here. No, 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 look at what Peter was saying now. In 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 15. Peter was saying now, he's he talking about sin and the people and thing, right? And, and, and Balaam and thing. Here what he was saying. He was saying now, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosso. But Balaam is what he said. He said the Bible said Bosso. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. <clears throat> now, Paul talk about the wages of sin there in that particular thing. I, I, and, 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 and I talk about opsonio, right? Opsonion. And that's the word for, for, for wages that Paul used there, right? Opsonion. Peter is using mm -hmm. mistos here. But it's, it's translated the same wages. So Peter is saying that the wages, um, and people went, they went astray 
looking for following the way of Balaam was a false prophet and cursing people out of your man then. Um, um, who love the wages of unrighteousness. Wages, there's pay for work, pay that you get hired for. So what Paul was saying and what Peter was saying about wages is two different things. You cannot look at the word wages because, uh, and you have to look at the, 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 the Greek translation <coughs> from the original word that these writers used to would understand the context in which they were speaking and what, uh, what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So Peter was speaking about salary, the wages, and Paul was speaking about a soldier's pay for missing the man. I wonder if, 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 if what I'm saying here is starting to make some sense about missing the point. Or what is the point? Now, the question you would ask now, so what is the point? What is the point in the Old Testament or for the misstep? What is the point in the New Testament to prevent you from misstepping? You know what is the point? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. It's not a what, but a who. So the question is a now, who? who is the point? The Holy Spirit is the point. He is the point. Mm -hmm. I just say, what's the point? To start off with, so people would understand. But at the end now, the question, um, the, the answer is, is not what's the point. It's who is the point? The point is the Holy Spirit. Who prevents us from sinning? The Holy Spirit. Catherine Coleman once said in one of us, I don't want to be in this world one minute after the Holy Spirit has taken off. Because the Bible says that he who restrains will stay restrained until he's taken off. And you know that. Right? He who restrains yeah. the Holy Spirit, who restrains um, violence and, and, and debauchery and, and people from the world. Is the Holy Spirit restraining all the uh, all, all these man, man and right now in the earth? If he wasn't here restraining, if it has so much crime and chaos, and the, Holy, and, the, and the Holy Spirit still restraining. You can imagine how bad it will be after God removed the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit is, um, has left the earth and left a man. Can you can imagine yeah. how bad it will be? What we live in now is Joe compared to, to, to when the Holy Spirit is taken out. So it's not what is the point, True. it's who is the point. Who prevents us from sinning? Mm -hmm. Who will strengthen us? A lot of the things that Jesus spoke about in the, in the, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, about, about um, blessed is he who mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed is, the, is for, for, you know, are, are those who uh, who are persecuted and re, and and, and, and uh, for, for righteousness' sake, right? And, and and things like that. People could go through those things by the Holy Spirit. The point. He is the point. So when you miss the yeah. point, and uh, in other words, as the world will say, when you sin, is the Holy Spirit. Right, who prevents us from sinning because when you are born again, the old nature, old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. The spirit of the living yeah. God is the point, He is the point. The point is not a point or, 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 or anything, it's that it's who is the point. The point is the Holy Spirit. You cannot fulfill the law without the, the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That is why Israel or nobody could fulfill the law. That's why we are not under the law. I'm, 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 a lot of the commandments and Jesus gave. Blesses this one, don't do this, don't do that. It's because he knew, he knew when the Holy Spirit had come, we would be able to fulfill or to keep all those rules and, 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 and teachings that he gave on the mount, that he gave us. Because the Holy yeah. Spirit is our comforter, he will guide us and lead us into all truth. God has entered his laws into our mind. Peter and I spoke about, or, or John and I spoke, and spoke about the anointing you have in you, and it was not need that anyone should teach you, but the anointing you have in you is going to guide you and leading to all truth. Mm -hmm. Isaiah called, called, yeah. called uh, um, Jesus and he was with your counselor, your advisor. So we have to depend and, 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 and gravitate towards the Holy Spirit. The only way we could do that is by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and by being born again. The only way you would be able to overcome sin is by being born again. The only way you are born again is when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit come to live in you. You cannot be born again Except by faith, right? Look, 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 look. Mm -hmm. uh, studying, mm -hmm. um, 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 Jesus says, "Was you know what Jesus said? The kingdom of God is here." Many people say, "Well, how you know the kingdom of God?" When man arguing about where, uh, what is the kingdom of God or where the kingdom of God, Jesus said, "The kingdom of God here by," and you know how you know the, king, the, the, the kingdom of God here because he casting out devils. That is how we know the kingdom of God is here. The, the, Satan and them demons have no authority. Right? They have no authority. Yeah. And that is how we know the kingdom of God has come. 
Look, and look at it in the Gospels. Jesus said, if somebody asked, how you know the kingdom of God has come, look at how we, and Jesus said, it's, it's, it's by and casting out the devils. Then he went on to say, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And if they any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. The kingdom of God is here. It has come. We have to start living like kingdom people. We have to start living like, like, like uh, um, members of the kingdom of God. We, 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 are, we, we, we are kings and priests after the order of Melchizedek. We have to start living like that. Mm -hmm. And how do we live like that? As kings and priests, we forgive those who trespass against us. Somebody do you something, you forgive them. Right? Somebody do you something, you forgive them. And you tell them to make peace mm -hmm. or let's make peace. Uh, but, but a lot of us hold things against people. And I've seen that. I saw that. And it hurt me to see that here it is. I forgive somebody for something. And that person don't seem like they, they, they feel like they were forgiven. I'm not seeing the freedom. I'm not seeing the release that that person feel and, and that they were forgiven. But when, when, if, if a man forgive you, you are forgiven if you trespass against that man. And if you trespass against God and ask God for forgiveness, he is faithful to forgive you. Right? You pray and you ask God. And mm -hmm. let me tell you something. When you pray and you ask God for forgiveness, I, I, by, by faith you have to believe you receive forgiveness and just move on. Do allow the enemy to keep you in that position, that place where you miss your, your, your step, that place where you miss the point, right? And, 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 and leave you there. Keep moving. The, the enemy do things to staunch people's growth, to prevent you from advancing forward. And he wants to keep you in one place so you can remain in defeat. But I'm saying to somebody out there today, move on. Move forward. You are forgiven. Move forward. Don't stick there. Don't worry yeah. about if you are forgiven or not. Yeah. By faith, you believe you are forgiven. If you, if you offend somebody and that person forgive you and, and they don't have to tell you that they forgive you, all they have to tell you, all they have to, is, is by the love they show you the relationship, you know you're forgiven. Move on. Don't let the enemy hold you in a rut, in a position and where you are. Don't let church um, and people use tradition to, to, to convict you of sin, right? And all that tradition that people use, how many people they have out there who, who, who um, feel they're living in sin and they're, and they're living, to, uh, they're cohabiting for 20 years, 30 years, that children are still feeling guilty because the church makes them feel guilty. Marriage and church, the Jews, the Jews from the Old Testament, you have never heard of a Jew getting married in a church, in the, in the temple. No Jew, nowhere in the Bible shows a Jew getting married in the temple. Where that tradition come from? Where well, they had a celebration. People go and celebrate mm -hmm. and they had a, a meeting and then they exchanged their, 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 um, their, their letters. And I studied Jewish. Uh, our marriage is old, old testament and, and, and the new one. The new one, the young people, and want, the, um, I want to pay if they divorce. They want to just divorce and go. The, the, the modern Jews. But the old Jews now, if you, if you get some, and that Jesus if you get somebody a, a letter of divorcement, when you get a letter of divorcement, you have to pay the woman if you're divorcing her. Yeah. You understand? And that's what Jesus was speaking about. But the point mm -hmm. is, do not let tradition and people convict you of sin. Your, the, the God, the, the Holy Spirit is supposed to convict you, or your conscience is supposed to convict you of sin, not people. Don't let people convict you. Nobody can convict me of any sin. If, if, if I sin and somebody say, yeah, you sin, I say, hey, I'm going to go before God. Lord, um, if I sin against you, bring it to my remembrance. And, and I repent of my sin. I repent. If I sin, I repent. If I have opportunity to mm -hmm. repent, I repent. You feel anybody could hold me in a corner and, 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 and say, I sin. And accuse me of sinning. Oh, let preach on the on the on the um uh, 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 on the pulpit on a Sunday and all that thing. And and I saw and, and, and all that saying, yeah, even if I fall, I shall not be utterly cast down. For God hand lift me up. So even if I fail, if I misstep, if I miss the mark, I have forgiveness in Christ Jesus. If I ask for forgiveness, and it's not yeah. for anybody to accuse yeah. me. No, I'm not saying this, you know, people that say. Well, somebody, I'm going to accuse them. I'm saying this, should no, nobody accuse me. It's somebody who I forgive, who, who, who still feel they are not forgiven. And that is what is, is why I'm speaking about, uh, speaking like this. I'm not a better big song for somebody yeah. who forgives me. I don't care who, who forgive me or not. God forgive me. But if, if I offend somebody, I will apologize to that person and say, listen, I'm sorry. <clears throat> 
if I'm wrong. Yeah. I apologize. Listen, I'm sorry. And I move on. Right? Because I don't want to remain in that spot. It's not wrong uh, to, to admit you make a mistake. Say, yeah, I make a mistake. <clears throat> Many times I make a mistake. People say, well, you know, Glenn, should I do this? I say, well, I didn't know. <clears throat> I did not should have done that. I could have done that. But I will do it now. So what do you do? You, and you go ahead and do it. Yes, you, 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 ain't, you ain't allow pride to come in and, and pretend that, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I ain't bound to do that. Man. No. You know you should have done that. This is what I should have done. I admit, listen, you see this? I should have done this. I didn't know. So I went and do this. I will do it in this way. I accept that um, um, I should have done it, but I didn't know, right? So I go on and I do it, and I correct it. That nobody can hold me accountable for that. You understand? Or nobody should hold you accountable for that. Yeah. And, 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 and that is the problem with people. They don't have the faith. If, if, if you don't have faith that God has forgiven you, then you will live with that sin, with that guilty conscience all your life. Yeah. And that is what keeps people in bondage. A guilty conscience and it keep attacking in your mind. I, I, I seen on Facebook uh, uh, a lot of people get and get attacking their mind. Eh? They say, Oh God, overthinking. Um, praise the oh Lord, help me not to overthink. That's because you are allowing that. If I am overthinking, that's eh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. If I overthink, I would either say oh, oh, no. Do you know you have control over what you think? And, it, and you and you can't talk to your thinking man. You, you can't think and talk to your mind. Because your mind. You're, uh, you're thinking in your mind, so you're thinking now. I'm telling you, and you're, you're thinking to your mind. I ain't gonna think about that. And what will happen? Faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So I tell yeah. my mind, I, I tell my mind, shut up! I don't want to hear that. And you know my mind <laughs> obey me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I tell them, they're not joking. No. <laughs> I tell my mind, I say, shut up! I don't want to hear that. And I shut it up one time. Yeah, because oh, this is, I have control over. I have control over my whole body, boy. When I was yeah. born again. Right True. when I was born, in my spirit and soul, I tell my mind, my mind and my body. You see, you, you, you see, your mind is part of your body, right? And your mind is part of your body. So we're going to have your body corrupt. No, your mind accustomed being corrupt too now. Mm -hmm. It's a habit. Well, it's a habit. Mm -hmm. So if your mind accustomed over thing and then you say, "Boy, shut up!" I don't hear that more, boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, your mind don't say okay, but just shut up one time. I don't say nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut it up. Because if I say I ain't thinking about, it, I don't want to hear that, man. What's wrong with mm -hmm. you? Only person I yeah. buff up now is my mind. I don't buff nobody else up because my mind is a little hard. So that's why I talk to my mind harsh. You're right. I don't want to confuse me. So mm -hmm. we have to understand that. We have to understand, listen, you are forgiven. Sin or, or missing the mark, you can't be forgiven for that. Don't accuse yourself. Just repent and move on. And sometimes you, you, uh, so if somebody refuses to accept an apology, repent and move on. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. Repent and move on. Don't persecute yeah. anybody. Do, do you know what's said in the word from the gospel when Jesus say, "Blessed are those who, um, who, 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 who are persecuted." Right? Mm -hmm. You know what persecution is there? What Jesus was speaking about? Persecuted or persecution, which a lot of people do. Persecuted or persecution there means to follow. Come from a Greek word which means to follow. So people are persecuting other people and they realize they're persecuting the people. But um, people like that shall, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Um, uh, uh, once they're right. Um, uh, or, or, or for, for Jesus' sake. Now, and now here what happens. If, uh, if the word means to follow, it means that people who continually accuse you for the same thing that, that uh, over and over and keep pursuing you, if you make a mistake, they keep pursuing you and happening at all the time and talking about um, you, you, you missing the mark and, and they keep hitting you all the time. That is persecution. You know? hmm. If somebody wow. keep reminding you of, 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 of something, of a sin or a misstep, they are persecuting you. you know? hmm. And you know wow. that? Because yeah. persecution... That constant they, reminder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they, a persecution means to follow. Every man, yeah. because of, you see, sometimes Paul and them talk about persecution for the gospel's sake. What happened there now? If you study how Paul was, when Paul and them was preaching the gospel, people used to follow mm -hmm. them anywhere they go and bad talk them. Mm -hmm. people used to, again, you understand? Yeah. The girl who was only talking about Paul and them, and the man, the, the, the girl was following Paul and saying, um, apostle of God and men of God and things. 
You remember the girl in the mm-hmm. that castle demon with her, I think it's in Ephesus and yeah. they them up and, and send them out and say that I pay them? What happened mm-hmm. there? The demon threw the girl. The girl was persecuting Paul. And he get angry right. because what he was following him. So that is persecution right. Paul was experiencing there for the gospel sake. Yeah. So persecution yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that people be beating you up or, or want to kill you or they're or they, or they chopping you up alone, you know. Persecution means they constantly remind you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why Paul said, Paul said he follow. Paul said he fo- he he persecuted the Christian. Apart from killing him, he follow Christian all over the place. So the, and that's what Paul was saying there. He follow the Christian. Anyway, them Christian go, I'm going to kill them, boy. What? They go down. They go and see them. I'm going for them to race me. I'm going to kill all of them. He persecuted them. So apart from yeah. killing them, he may not have killed them, but he brought them back to justice. Some of them. To Jerusalem to answer, so he followed them. Mm-hmm. So Paul was, and and I why and and and, and Jesus said, Paul, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why persecutors down me? Why are you following me? Why are you mm-hmm. only sending people behind me all the time? Why, why are you only coming behind me so all the time? I, I mean, understand. So the same yeah. way, the the demon was persecuting Paul on the castle of the devil. Paul was following Jesus and persecuting the Christians because I once a Christian is born again, Christ and living him. It's Christ he persecuting the body of Christ. So. So, so I mean, just do do and say, uh-huh, so bam, he save him. I mean, understand? So we we, yeah. we have to understand. What, sometimes we may be persecuting somebody by following them and just keep um reminding them of the sin or, or trying to think that is persecution. So if you're not if you do, do forgive somebody and you continue to remind you of that, that is a form of persecution. Eh? Yeah. That's why God said forgive. Sense. They will persecute people. Mm-hmm. So. Um, that 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 is really the reason why uh, 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 you know um, I'm speaking about sin, but I, I, I'm looking at it from a different point. What yeah. point is sin is missing the point in the Hebrew, and 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 if if sin is missing the point, then what is the point? The question is not what is the point; it's who is the point. The point is the Holy Spirit. The only way we wouldn't sin, or we we, we would be convicted of sin, or or strengthened against sin or not really sin, is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that prevents us from sinning. That's why Paul say, the things that I want to do, I don't do. Then he say, he, he, he talk about, in Romans um, 7 or 8, 7, 8 and 9, he say, um, I see a law, I see a law that when I want to do good, sin is with me. Right? The law of the flesh and the mm-hmm. law of the Spirit. So he says, mm-hmm. so when I sin, it's not I that sin, but sin that dwelleth in me that sin. So the same I was telling you now, based on Paul, when my mind I want to convict me. And when my mind want to um to to overthink situations and, and to cause me to be in stress, I talk to him and I say, shut up. I don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Paul, so I'm speaking to the sin that dwelleth in me. But it's no, it's not mm-hmm. I want to talk about or think about um about about or overthink a situation or not forgive myself or be angry with somebody. Is my is, is sin that dwelleth in me? So what I do now, mm-hmm. I haven't understood that. I tell, I tell, I tell, my, I tell my flesh, hey, shut up! I don't want to know that. I forgive that person yeah. already. Let's move on. Yeah. And my mind, listen to me. You have to learn to mm-hmm. control your mind, control your thoughts. How you control it by dominating your thoughts. Do you dominate people, dominate your thoughts. Yeah. And you have to forgive people and live the, the, the uh, you know, the life that God called you to live. So, mm-hmm. um, that is really the point. What is the point? Who's not the point? What is the point? What who is, is the point? point? Is who is the point? Who is the point? The Holy Spirit is the point. Yeah. So that that is, is really my contribution today. I spoke for fifty five minutes. You talk for about twenty. You stre- oh. you stretch it. So I hope I hope people are blessed today. How people feel forgiven. I hope people are not um, beating up themselves for mistakes they have made. For 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 for, for, for uh, missing the point. For missing the the shot. Or, or people don't feel. Um, sometimes, as I say, people have to tell you, Sarah, forgive you. By just the person actions towards you, you know you are forgiven. Mm-hmm. They may not. Um, <clears throat> sometimes people who forgive people, they, it's not that they, they avoid them, but they, they have moved on so far that, that, that they don't even want to dwell on things that happened in the past already. True. They, they may have other things to think about, or other places to go, other things to worry about. It's not that they are mm-hmm. angry with any person, but I'll tell you something. Yeah, let me tell you something. You know, 
Jesus talk about blessed is the meek and and and, hum, and you know and, and humility for they shall inherit the kingdom of God for they shall see God blessed are those who are persecuted you know while I study in that with, with other books of course other other um authors do you know that that the, 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 the they call them and the and the beatitudes right I think it's um can't remember who called it and the beatitudes some fellow I'm back in the day, we, we talk about blessed. A blessing mm -hmm. means happiness. Mm -hmm. It's a progression. If you study the, 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 the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus started off, in chapter 5 and verse 1, it's really a progression. So from one thing, you inherit the kingdom of God, you see God, and you keep going up. So the, 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 the challenges, a challenge is really a test of your strength and your resilience, eh? the and your mind, the challenge. Increases as you as you mature in your Christian life until you are persecuted. But the point is, do you know that all those challenges, mourning and all them thing, um, it 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 has a special anointing in it. For you to go through that, there must be an anointing in your life to forgive somebody mm -hmm. who offended. You must have the anointing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people look mm -hmm. at it. I remember reading a book where this old lady say, "You know, I reach a stage in my life." When I go through something, I don't know if it's a blessing or a trial. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because in the trial, the blessings come from the come trial. Down. Because if you're more yeah, than yeah. Ten, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, the blessings true. come from the trial. If you're, if you're not experiencing trials in your life or, 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 or challenges, what's happened? There's no anointing to be had. A lot of people, uh, you know, a, 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 a lot of people, when they're going through challenges, is then you see God, you know. But it's how you react to the challenge. If somebody, uh, and you know, pray for those who persecute you and despise, feel you use you. That is an anointing that mm -hmm. you will get. For praying, for, it takes an, an, the, the anointing, a very str strong anointing to pray for somebody who despitefully use you and persecute you and say evil things of you. It takes a very strong anointing. And people True. who uh, could do that. True. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what the blessing is. Blessed are those who, 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 who pray, I mean, you know, who, who pray for those who, I mean, or, you know, I pray for them who despitefully use you. Blessed are those, right? Because when you pray for them, you receive a blessing. So if somebody is persecuting you, then you really going to get a good blessing. The bigger the challenge or the trial is the greater the anointing. Go then go give you a pen of an, uh, um, uh, um, uh, a machine gun anointing to fight a pen I fight, a, a, a pen I trial. If it's a small thing, you it's only a pen I need for that. We're going to take a gun and go on a, a machine gun and shoot down a, um, a bee. You need a machine gun <laughs> and to shoot down a bee. You just take a knife. You can clap yeah. the bees one. So go and yeah. give it two hands for smaller mm -hmm. things to clap bees. So, so you clap the bee like that. But conquer all joy. Paul said, conquer all joy when I experience the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because Paul and them realize the anointing is in the trial. The blessing yeah. is in the trial. Yeah. If you read, it's if you read a chapter five and anything, so if you ain't going through nothing, then you ain't getting no blessing. I tell no anointing coming. Yeah, I, I ever notice people who don't who don't have the anointing don't have um every, uh, people who don't have challenges do have the anointing. Mm -hmm. A strong anointing. Yes, you might have yeah. the anointing, but you have a strong anointing. That is probably why the church is so um docile in Trinidad. Because the church is not being persecuted, because the church faces no challenge, and when the church faces a challenge, they give up. Many pastors and preachers they, and they give up, and you know, and they give up, and they give up because mm -hmm. uh, because because there is no challenge. Even if they face a challenge, uh, you know, they're, and they're under pressure, right? Mm -hmm. if, if people see a pastor drinking a glass of wine or something, the church persecute that pastor and talk about him because it's a tradition. And that is not a sin. Yeah. Plenty of preachers going to talk about that. And say, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm speaking about. And I can yeah. prove it in the Bible. But the point I'm making, pastors have to hide to sit down and have a glass of wine in a public place because it is a traditional sin. By tradition, yeah. it's a sin. Mm -hmm. You understand the point I'm making? Yeah. And people don't understand that. So what we do, we put mm -hmm. ourselves back in bondage. <clears throat> You put ourselves yeah. in bondage, right? And we accuse the pastors of a traditional sin, but it's not really a sin the pastor commit. 
drunkenness is a sin. Right? Or drunkenness cause you to sin. Drunkenness mm -hmm. will cause you to sin. But not having a glass of wine will cause you to sin. But why pastors have to hide? Bishops have to hide half a glass of wine with their family in a restaurant. They won't have a glass of wine, but they're looking around to see if anybody watching them. And when mm -hmm. they're lying with me, who they know don't talk, they just had a glass of wine. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. that is my contribution for today. Be free. Who is the point? Jesus yeah. came to set you free and live free. Mm -hmm. Your sin, for, ask for forgiveness, move on. Do not get, get, get caught up in that trap. All right? You yeah. missed the point? Yeah. Sin is not as bad as you think it is. The only time you will know how, uh, the only time sin really bad is when you are separated from God and there is no way. Separation from God is the greatest um, penalty for sinning or, 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 for, or, 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 or for falling short of the mark. You know? yeah. Separation from God. You know? you know what I'm saying? I could, I, I, yeah. you know, if, if I'm separated from God, I, I feel so lost but, 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 because I am lost. And sometimes I don't feel him, I don't sense him, and I sit down. Look, look, look at the I sit down in front of the salon. And I put on my arm. I just put on my radio now. Mm -hmm. On my radio. My radio is at 98 most of the time. I like to have it there. Uh, thing. Although I don't listen to some of the things. But I hear, the, the, I hear um, in Christ alone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, I know song. that song. I started to sing mm -hmm. that song in the salon in front of the church there. I raise up my hand, me can watch. I raise up my hand, I started to sing that song in front of the salon in my car. And uh -huh. I, I, I started to feel the presence of God in the car. The whole car just mm -hmm. like it just full with the glory of God. Me I see no smoke or not because my was closed. And I didn't care who watched mm -hmm. me. And I just mm -hmm. raised my hand in that car and I sit down. And people, you know, are watching me. You know, they ever watch me on the main road. My hand up in the mm -hmm. and I praise God in that car when the song done. A strong, strong, strong anointing. I feel all the burdens removed. So you don't have yeah. to do anything for God to come. You just have to make yourself available. Yeah, right? True. Mm -hmm. So I just want to reiterate. Who is the point? Holy Spirit is the point. Get to know him. Make sure mm -hmm. and get to know make Jesus. The only way you could get to know him is if you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. And the Holy Spirit come to dwell in you. And Everything is going to be all right. Something so, died there. Eh? <laughs> eh? Your phone died. No, nah, my, 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 my phone have all kind of things. And there's somebody who sent a message. That Sherry, I'm oh. um, Sherry. Oh, I want to extend my condolences to Dr. Uh, to the family of Dr. Michael Ababulal. The funeral has been postponed. Sherry is already here. The, uh, the body, uh, they not come in on the flight they was expecting. So, Next week, sometime, is Dr. Mike Babulal's funeral. Mm -hmm. um, this whole thing is so, unfortunate, but here, yeah, boy. Hmm. Wait, wait. Is it unfortunate that dog died? No, talking about the funeral now. There have been plans and everything, you know. It's unfortunate that he died, but I mean, every, with everything now, but in all things, you know, God, from, God, God is looking this out for them. God have his reasons for that. And that is, yeah. is, is, and that is, 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 is maturity as a mm -hmm. Christian to know, listen, God in charge of that, you know. Because he has his reasons for doing that. And you just rock back, stand back, yeah. and do nothing and allow God to have his way. Yeah. And he has his reasons for doing that. I think a news article came out, dead man missed his flight or something. <laughs> I know, I see a lot. I doesn't read them kind of foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, you know, and but, let's just um, pray and let people forgive themselves for me. Um, I want to read one more script. As I said, that so, also a reminder is Ephesians 4 and 32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Right? Mm -hmm. You forgive because. You have been forgiven by your heavenly father for Christ's sake, right? Now, why he said for Christ's sake? Because of the work that Jesus Christ came to. That's, it, that's the father's soft spot, right? Mm -hmm. This work, the completed work of Jesus Christ on that cross. For Christ's sake, he has forgiven us. So you forgive too. 
So when it is you hold that grudge, remember your heavenly father didn't hold that grudge, a grudge against you. He forgave you too, right? So that is a reminder. God forgave us of our sins, so we should also pass it on and yeah. forgive others, well, right? Well, a lot of people, I know, they have the authority to forgive sin. Eh? True. Because a lot of people, no, I'm not sure, you, 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 know, you just hit something there. Let me show you something. I just hit something. Mm -hmm. Somebody do you something, right? Yeah. There is this somebody come, come, come and pelt a big son and break a glass in the front of the salon. Right? God forbid, because Caribbean glass is going to make some money off of it. So somebody come out and buy the salon, that entire salon, and pelt a big stone and break the glass. Right? They offend you. Do, do you know, right? And look at this. You know, it's you the offending. You know? The person offend you, eh? I'm you with me? You look like a stick. You hear me? I like I like I like stick. Right. So anyhow, I talking. I'm, I'm gonna see. Right, so I talking, she stick. Now hear this. Somebody offend you. They do something to you, they offend you, they um um fall short. And they sin, and let's say they sin against you. What a lot of us do, right? What a lot of us do, especially Christians, I'm, I'm laughing because I sin, because I, 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 I sense a, um, a, a piece of revelation here. What a lot of us do is that we depend on God. We say, God will punish you for doing that. God will punish him for doing this. And we, we, when people offend us or sin against us or do something against us, we want God to punish them right you are going to punish them people you know but it's really you they offend right it's really are you they offend they have offend god but you are going to punish them it's your responsibility to punish them it's not god's responsibility it is your if, if you if they offend you know then you have the authority to forgive that person who offend you but sometimes somebody offend you and it is not really a sin against god but you are going to punish them so you wait until you're dead, until thy kingdom come, until everything happens. You, and you end up a skeleton and then you realize, you know, God and punish, uh, and, and punish that person because it's not God the offend is me. So the onus was on me. I have the authority to forgive that person. Right? And we have to understand that. You, a lot of people saying, a lot of people saying, God will punish you because you bonks my foot, right? Or God will punish you because you're, you're, I'm you're doing me this. God will punish you because you're doing me. no, no. The person they offend God, they offend you, and you have the authority to forgive them. If you forgive them, well, that's your business, right? But they offend God, so they expect God to punish them, and that is one of the reasons why um, the Bible says that God allowed the, the sun to shine on the just and the unjust right he allowed the sun to shine on the just and the unjust why is that because we are all we all have the opportunity to accept jesus christ as our lord and savior the thing about it is we also have the as when we are, we all whether we accept jesus christ or not have the up the 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 the, 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 the privilege to forgive people who offend us but many times we sit down now and waiting for god to punish somebody who offend me and we are, I didn't realize now, but the person that offend God, why should God punish that person? The person that, and, and break one of God's law, why should God punish that person? So you spend your entire life watching and waiting for God to punish the person when the person really didn't sin against God. They sinned against you, they offend you, and the onus was on you to be like God and forgive them. So you could live, take that and digest that and let us see. Um, exactly where it's going to take us because that is where we're going that is a is something that i just re realized is a piece of revelation for myself too because if somebody sin and they then offend god and i keep saying it over because i want i wanted to sink in i keep and it's called this repetitive coaching or repetitive teaching and you, you say it over and over until it's sinking if somebody sin against you that doesn't necessarily sin against god so do ask god to punish somebody 
who sin against you. They didn't sin against God, nor did they break one of God's law. Therefore, the owner says on you to forgive them. And I see her calling me. Yes, sir. I don't know if I could any broadcast now. But I, I will just close it off in my end for itself. All right, okay. Yeah, bye. Yeah, so Sarah, um, computer die on her day. I don't know what was wrong with them. Like they don't pay the electricity. They don't do nothing. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with them. Anyway, she has another close of the um, the, and the broadcast. But I want to say it again. If somebody sin against you, but not against God, or let's say they offend you, but not against God, do wait on God to punish the person. You have the privilege to forgive them. If you don't forgive them, that's your problem. But God ain't gonna punish somebody who didn't break one of his law and 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 offend God. Maybe the person offend you, but they didn't offend God. So don't wait and go to punish them and, and expect things to happen. You will suffer for that. So forgive. Because you have the opportunity and the responsibility to forgive those who offend you if you want God to forgive you. So in closing, I will say that. But I'll, I'll just close with a word of prayer. And um I'll try to see if I can stop this thing. I don't even know how to stop it, but we'll see. All right. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of fellowship this afternoon. I thank you, O oh God, for your mercy and your grace. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. I thank you for your revelation of this word. I thank you, O oh God, that um, those who hear it um, is going to put it into practice. Even before by faith, I believe that they're going to put this word into practice. I pray, O oh God, that your people forgive one another as you forgive all of us, O oh God. Give your servant the, the grace through your Holy Spirit and all those who are listening to me right now. Give them the grace to forgive those who trespass against them. Give them the grace to forgive those who offend them because by keeping these people in bondage and not forgiving them, we are keeping ourselves also in bondage. Because by not forgiving, we ourselves are not forgiven for the sins that we commit. So we ask you, God, to give us to continue to give us revelation. We pray, God, that on Saturday and Sunday when Sarah comes to preach, that you, you, you anoint her, you, you, you give her word and season. I pray that you give her the unction to speak things that are not as though they were. I ask you, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, to, to, to keep us safe, to protect us, and to watch over our country. We pray for our prime ministers and our leaders. We pray that you give them the insight, the foresight. We, and we pray that, that, and that you give them the ability to take us through these challenging times that we experience, whether they have their belong to one party or another we pray that they may come together and work to, um, towards one common goal as and, and, and that is to um the, the prosperity of Tr Trinidad and Tobago we pray oh God for a police service and we, that, that they may be given the ability and the grace to prevent crime which is what they were hired for and um we also ask it to, to continue to keep a hedge around Trinidad and Tobago to protect us and to keep us safe from both a natural and man-made disaster this we ask in jesus name amen so stay blessed on sunday morning i'll be looking down the main road for you service starts at 10 a.m feel free to come and visit us bye